Hello students, in this video we'll discuss the polar decomposition of an operator from a vector space to itself. Let's suppose that T maps a finite dimensional vector space into itself, V finite dimensional inner product space, Then there is a unitary matrix theta and a positive definite, a positive semi definite matrix R such that T is equal to theta r, right? And so they call this the polar decomposition. This is the polar decomposition of t. And it should remind you of the polar decomposition of a complex number, right? So if you have a complex number z, z, which is x plus i, y, can always be written as what? Can always be written as r e to the i theta, right? By Euler's formula, where r is the square root. So r is, of course, the square root of x squared plus y squared, and theta is just the inverse tangent up to the right argument, up to the right sign of y over x, right? Um, and up to sign, up to quadrant, up to quadrant. Okay, great. And so that is the polar decomposition. So we're thinking of this thing as our unitary over here, and this thing over here is our positive semi-definite, right? Not negative quantity r over here is greater than or equal to zero, where it's equal to zero if and only if z is equal to zero, and theta is the argument, the rotational factor of the, the rotational element of the complex number z. Excellent. So how do we do this? Well, the idea is to use the singular value decomposition. So we're going to use the singular value decomposition. So by the singular value decomposition, by the SVD, I know I can write t of any vector v in the space as what? As sigma 1 and then v with phi 1 hat, psi 1 hat, all the way down to sigma r, where that's the rank of this operator. Sigma r is the, that's the r represents the rank. And then v with phi r hat and then psi r hat. And here r is the rank of t, r is rank of t. Great. And so now, of course, the rank, this t might not be invertible, might not be full rank, so I can extend these bases, these orthonormal bases, to bases of the entire space. So extend phi 1 hat through phi r hat and psi 1 hat through psi r hat to orthonormal basis, orthonormal basis of v, right? And so what we'll get is we'll get these new orthonormal bases, we'll go all the way up to n, right? So I'll pass r, go up to n, where n's the dimension over here, right? And psi 1 hat through uh, psi. That's a psi, not a psi. Psi n hat. Great. All right, so now I'm in a position to define our unitary operator. So here's what our unitary operator is going to be. So define now the unitary operator theta. Define theta of v to be what? Theta of v is just going to be v with phi 1 hat in the direction of psi 1 hat all the way down to no singular values here, right? v with uh, phi n hat, psi n hat, okay? Great. Now, of course, the range of theta, this implies that the range of theta, the range of theta is going to be what? It's going to be the span of psi 1, since it's an orthonormal basis, psi n. And so theta is full rank. So theta is full rank. Okay. And now what's the norm of theta v? So the norm of theta v quantity squared is equal to, these are orthogonal, right? So I can use the Pythagorean theorem, right? It's just going to be the sum j goes from 1 up to n, of what? Of just the sum of these coefficients quantity squared, j hat squared v. And by the Pythagorean theorem, that's just equal to v, but since it's an orthonormal basis, that's just v squared, right? And that shows me that theta v 
is equal to the norm of V. So theta is an isometry. Okay, so I have an isometry that's full rank, and the isometries that are full rank in the fine dimensional case are unitary, right? So this is a, so theta is unitary. Theta is unitary. Great, so I have the first component, I have a unitary matrix theta, right? Excellent. And so now I can need to find what this positive definite, positive semi-definite matrix R is. And so to do that, we're going to appeal to the singular value decomposition again. So now I know what TV is over here, right? And so let me look at T star. Um, I know that's T star applied to, so we know that's T of phi, so the T of the phi J is equal to the sigma J psi J, right, by the singular value decomposition. I know that's T star of the psi J of the psi J hat are sigma J phi J hat, right? So in other words, those are the Schmidt pairs, right? The so-called Schmidt pairs of the, the phi and the psi are the Schmidt pairs of this operator, right? And so if I apply T star to this over here, if I look at T star T applied to V, well, that will be is I'm going to output what? The theta is, right? So I'm gonna have sigma one squared, sigma one squared, and then I'm going to have V with phi J, phi one in this case, phi one, and then I'll have a phi one hat, phi one, all the way down to what? The last thing over here, which is the R, right? So sigma R, sigma R squared, and then V with phi R, and then phi R hat, right? And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna define R to be the square root of this operator, the old, the unique positive square, this is a, this operator here, T star T is positive semi-definite, so it had, therefore it has a positive semi-definite square root. So I'm gonna define R of V to be what? Just to be this thing over here, just to be um, sigma one, sigma one, V with phi one hat, phi one hat, all the way down to sigma R, V with phi R hat, phi R hat. Excellent, okay. Now, what happens when I apply uh, my theta to this thing over here? Okay, so let's think about what's gonna happen when I apply theta to this thing over here. So if I apply theta R V, what will we get over here? So apply theta R V, now that's the final step in our process. So what's theta R V? So if I have a theta, then an R, then a V, that's gonna be theta applied to what vector? Applied to this vector over here, sigma one, and then V one, phi one hat, phi one hat, all the way down to sigma r, and then v with phi r hat, phi r hat. I'm plugging that vector into theta. And so what's this gonna give me over here? Well, theta is a linear operator, right? So I'm gonna have, what would theta do to, let's, let's look at what theta would do, for example, to phi one. Theta of phi one is just gonna give me psi one. So theta of phi one is giving me psi one, and all those also are zero, so this is gonna output what? So then, and then what would theta of phi r be? Theta of phi r, all those are gonna be zero except down to what? Down to the r thing over here, that's gonna be phi r. So what this gives me, the psi r rather, this gives me sigma one, and then V with phi one hat, and then psi one hat, all the way down to what? Sigma R, V with phi R hat, psi R hat, and lo and behold, if I look at our singular value decomposition, that is exactly just T of V, T of V. So I've just shown you how to construct, so TV is equal to this, so we have proven that T is equal to this unitary theta times this positive semi-definite matrix R over here, and this is the polar decomposition, this is our polar decomposition of T. Notice how, of course, it respects the rank because the R is extracting the rank information and the theta is extracting the, in some sense, the rotational aspect of what the operator is doing over here. So this is our polar decomposition and notice how it comes directly as a consequence of the singular value decomposition, which many other factorizations in this course come from. We can exploit the fact that the singular value decomposition is valid for any sort of going from a, a inner product space V to an inner product space W where the dimensions are not the same. In particular, when you have the same dimension, when you go from V to V, you get extra sort of structure that comes out of this. And this is a good illustration of how the singular value composition can be used to construct different factorizations. Thank you very much.